All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We look at the real estate sector vis-a-vis -vis the housing deficit. In Nigeria, however, access to affordable housing has largely stayed a pipe dream for the vast majority, particularly the middle and lower classes, which takes about 80% of the populace. The march of housing deficit has gotten worse over time, with successive government grappling with it. According to a publication by the CBN, Nigeria's housing deficit was at 7 million in 1991 and rose to 12 million in 2007, 14 million in 2010, 20 million units in 2019, and according to the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, it is currently at 28 million units as of January this year. I have a real estate consultant and public affairs analyst join me right now to look more at this uh, issue. I have Mustafa Iwela. Many thanks for joining me Thank on Business Thank Insights me, on Plus TV Africa. I just read without some statistics. There. It is really alarming how over the years uh, we have jumped through about um, 28 million as of um, uh, January this year. Okay, first of all, let me just start this way. How did we really get there? Is it that uh, the population is just uh, fast uh, or rapidly growing and... Um, we are not building houses because most of the times, most governments talk, they talk about housing estates and that they keep on building, and yet we still have these um, gaps. What's going on? Right. Thank you very much for having me, Justin, and thank you for bringing this uh, um, very critical topic to a front burner of our discussion today. Now, um, housing deficits is a, uh, has been a controversial discussion in the minds of relevant stakeholders recently, mm. and um, over the years, it keeps increasing. So January this year, we had about, as of today, it's, about, it's put to 28 million. Mm. That tells us that the numbers keeps going up. Yes, it does. So now, um, one, of the, one of the major causes for that is uh, we, lack, we lack favorable government policies. And uh, government policies has done mm. so, so much to us that it affects housing supply. Now, if you ask me, Nigeria is not the only country that has housing deficits. Mm. But our numbers are very alarming. Mm. America is a population of 330 million people. Their yeah, housing deficit is about 6.8 million. The UK, United Kingdom, is a population of about 67 million people. Their housing deficit is about 4.3 million. Mm. So let's come back to a, a, a close, a close by African country like Ghana. Mm. Ghana has a population of 34 million. Mm. Their housing deficit is 1.8 million. Mm. But Nigeria, we about 220 million people. Our housing deficit is 28 million. You see that our numbers is actually the highest mm -hmm. out of those countries I've just mentioned. True. So now, and one of the major reasons for this is that the government is not doing so much as expected. According to our Land Use Act of 1978, the government has vested all the lands in the state in the hands of the governor. So how the governor now continues to administer the distribution of those land is totally dependent on that governor. Now, if you, want to, if you want to buy a land in Lagos State and build a housing estate, as real estate developers, there are a lot of odds you have to cross. A lot of developers have even taken their money elsewhere to other countries because of the rigorous and the complexities involved in building properties in Nigeria. But the honest truth is, in the last four years since the governor of Lagos State assumed office, mm. I can tell you that I think uh, fairly after the uh, late Chief Latif Jaconde, I'll tell you that uh, Mr. Babaji Sangulu has also is also trying to live up to that um, expectation in terms of providing housing. Mm. He has delivered well over 5,000 5, housing units in the past four years. We have about 4,000 units in Igondo. We have some scattered around Lake and everything. So I think because sometimes when these people do good, let's commend them. I think the governor of Lagos State is doing is not doing so bad when it comes to you know reducing that deficit. No doubt, there's a deficit. 28 million, of course, in the next few months, I, I bet it's going to go up. Mm. So what I think the government need, now needs to do... Now, before we talk about uh, what uh, the solutions yes, are, yes. let's still try and really understand what the issues are, because you mentioned uh, a lot of things. Uh, you talked about how investors yes. are, are actually moving to other places because of the uh, rigorous um, you know, issues when it comes to... Uh, developing properties in the country. Yes, Aside from Lagos that you have mentioned, uh, that, uh, that is uh, yeah, doing well, uh, trying to get up to the level of um, the later... To reduce the... Yes, Jachif, yeah. um, the former one, Latif Jakonde, yeah, yeah. you talked about... Uh, uh, so, but aside from the issue of uh, this uh, land, uh, land Use Act, which, uh, Act, yeah. you know, puts all of um, the ownership per se to the government, you know, 
if we were able to actually tackle the issue of, um, or maybe address the issue of Land Use Act, what other factors do we need to talk about? Because I know people have complained over time, even those who want to build their own houses, they talked about the issue of inflation, uh, cost of um, housing materials and all of that. Are those items uh, what we should also be looking at? Okay, now, so um, some of the critical things we, we should also look at to solve this uh, menace or this deficit is, uh, which is a, a critical problem in the first place, is Nigerians don't have that buying capacity in terms of the finance okay. to be able to afford houses. Mm. So it, the population of Nigeria, the middle income earners and the low income earners takes about 80%. Yes. So that means we are left to 20% 20, 20 who are the rich. Yeah. So the middle income earners and the low income earners do not have the capacity to buy properties as they should mm. because they are earning, they are, what they earn does not really commensurate with, work, with, with the value of houses. Mm. Now, if you look at um, housing estates in areas like Ikorodu mm. and maybe, maybe fairly part of the mainland and maybe some places on the island too, mm. so you see that the prices of houses in those parts of the mainland, for example, are quite cheap. So a lot of times people can afford to buy them and mm -hmm. they can afford to have a reasonable payment plan. And one of the one of one of the major problem with uh, housing and all that as it is in, in Nigeria, it is today is people do not have access to financing. Our mortgage system mm -hmm. is not really doing so well. If you want to buy a property and you want to do it, you want you want to buy it through a mortgage, the processes involved can be very cumbersome. At some point, you you get fed up. That's, that, that's, one, that's one very, very key problem. Mm. And another very big problem is the cost of building materials also is not also helping. It keeps mm. going up every day. So this, also, this continues to add up to the value of the property and makes buying property difficult for those who don't make that much. Now, if you cannot talk about housing and not talk about infrastructure. Mm. So if you want to deliver a decent housing to people, you must also consider infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we have a housing deficit, we have infrastructure de deficits. We don't have roads. There are land in every part of Lagos, but there are no good roads to take you to those places. Mm -hmm. I've been to some parts of Lagos that we have to park my car and, and take a you know, crossover with a boat mm -hmm. because there's no road. And, there are, you know, and those, I'm talking about Lekki. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to cross over with a, with a boat just to get to your plot of land. And, wow. you, can, and, and you know the risk involved in those you know, crossing over by the water and all that. So, you can, so the government needs to rise up to ensure that certain things are done. Mm. Our national housing policy needs to be in fully implemented. All right. Fully mm. implemented. It's not really put to use. And also, mm. uh, credit financing has to be made very affordable for people. Credit we should finance. be able to reassess mortgage I was, gonna, I was going to even talk about that. Uh, sorry, I just had to butt in. Credit yes, financing please. is actually a thing that we should be looking at in terms of uh, mortgages specifically. Because over time, that's how people get um, land uh, right. in the, the, the more saner climbs because um, as it is right now, most people cannot just put out so much money at once to yeah. you know, get um, uh, these um, housing uh, or these houses that they need. You know, but um, that's another talk. We'll look at the mortgages uh, on another so let time. Me, let me, uh, if, if I'm interested to know that, yeah, just Nigeria is probably one of the few countries that I know that if you want to buy a property, you have to pay cash down. In okay. advance clients, you don't pay. They don't tell you to pay the full payment. You pay, you pay in, in installments. They can spread it for as high as 25 years, some as high as 30 years, depending on the arrangement. But in Nigeria, a lot of properties are being bought with full payment. Mm. Just, just recently, we've had few estate developers who are trying to say, you know, pay an initial deposit and spread the balance for 12 months. But let me tell you, 12 months is not even enough to pay off for a house of... No, I mean, I'm looking you know, at uh, maybe... Surf. 10 years, 15 10 years. years. So, so, so a lot of them will tell you pay initial deposit of 10% and spread the balance for 12 months, 24, 24 months. months. It's not enough to... Because it's, it's still short term. So the, so the default rate will be high. Yes. Because how do you want to meet up with... Uh, okay, now you're buying a house in Lekki for 100 million. Mm. You're paying the 10%, which is 20 million. And you have, to, and you have 80, um, 12 months to pay 80 million. So and you don't even earn that much. So would you say that's one of the reasons why we still have deficit in housing? Because one would have thought that since we have um, all of these developers coming out with um, various... Um, estate across the country that um, it would have actually helped in uh, reducing um, the gap that we have. So yeah, um, to be honest, um, property developers have also helped to reduce this deficit, no mm -hmm. doubt. So I've said that Lagos State gov government delivered about 5,000 last year, over 5,000. There are lots of private developers too. So the, the, the line between private sector pa partnership needs to be strengthened. 
Now, these developers have their challenges too. If they tell you what they are going through to put up those estates, I mean, they, they have to pay through their, I mean, through their, through, through their, through, through their neck. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a developer in Lekki putting up some properties somewhere in um, Shango Tedo. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he, he was supposed to deliver, uh, I think, about a few, fairly about, I think, two months ago. But because of this recent removal of FEP subsidy, now this guy is going through serious problem. People have paid when they haven't removed FEP subsidy. Mm -hmm. Now they've taken FEP subsidy off. Inflation has come in. This de developer is battling with delivery. Mm -hmm. so, so it, and it's difficult for him to come back and demand for more money from people who have subscribed. Mm -hmm. So these are problems. So government policies is really, really, you Effective. know, not helping developers. And I think that government should make this environment more enabling for private investors who wants to help them mm. reduce this deficit. But in your opinion, would you say government actually has any business in um, building houses or providing houses uh, in the first place? Um, I don't know, in my head I'm thinking um, it should actually be left to maybe to or the private sector or maybe some sort of private um, public sector partnership because if you ask me over time we've talked about uh, or we've heard about government uh, building low cost housing estate and um, you know relief and um, houses and everything but if you look at the prices it's still not even low cost as it were and sometimes uh, it is actually given to government's uh, cronies and um, politicians and their you know their friends so 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 let me say this i'm going to shake some tables here so one of my biggest problem with government owned projects is that you find out that a lot of times the people who are able to benefit from that project are not even those that need the project. They are most most times you find out that a lot of people who live in that estate are civil servants and people who have strong connections mm -hmm. to the government, and which is totally bad. So if you have so if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you have a plan to build units of houses for mm -hmm. the populace, then make it available for the populace. So it's difficult to now build those houses. And, and the process of you know acquisition for a, a common person is difficult. Mm. So that's that's one of the, that's, that's the, from the side of the government. Mm. So another very critical thing that we must also discuss here is our process of registering title on our properties on land is very difficult. Mm. If you buy a property now, the first battle you will go through is to register your title mm. with the government. The second battle you will go through is to get the building approval. Then the third battle you will go through is to ensure that you are even able to execute that project successfully without any fear of intimidation from any agency of the government. So there, there, needs, to be, there needs to be a total overhauling of that sector. The government needs to make this system very easy for developers. I bought a land, I want to get my, get my CFO, let it be very seamless. And by now we should, be, we should be moving towards the era of getting your CFO, everything done digitally. We should be moving towards the area of getting your building approval digitally on your phone without having to go from one office to another and allow us to start to lobby and all that. So th the world is evolving and we should also evolve. We cannot remain where we are. Mm. So now, so again, there's no doubt to say that there's no deficit. There's mm. a huge deficit. And to solve that, there has to be a lot of joint effort between the government and the people. Speak, aside from joint efforts, as we round off right now, yes, because um, I'm just uh, seeing several hands in the air, yes, my producer and director actually asking me to fly out of the studio. <laughs> but as it is right now, speaking of joint effort, uh, Lagos State, uh, maybe government and the private sector, what other aspects uh, should be looked at in the interim or in the immediacy so that uh, this um, uh, wide gap can actually be bridged to the barest minimum very quickly as we round up? Okay, so... so, so. Technically, I just feel that the government needs to, uh, what's it called, make the environment very enabling for, you know, investors who wants to help salvage the situation. There's a problem, at, and the government obviously is overwhelmed. Mm. Let private make it easy for private investors to help you reduce this deficit. People have this money; they have this funds. Mm. They want to develop, but they are they are afraid of uh, challenges that will come from the government and all that. So, How about the financial sector, what else can they do on their own part? Well, the, so so now so. I, so, I, so I do not think we can exhaust this, but I tell you, our interest rate also is not even helping. Mm. Our interest rate from the CBN now is 18.75%. 18 18 if you go to the banking sector now, if you, that, that's the benchmark interest rate from the bank is close to 30 to 40%. They have 40%. the other rates they so, so, well. so it's difficult. So if you borrow money from bank to build, mm. for the next five years, you are servicing that loan from the bank and mm. you cannot even make any profit. Okay. So, so something needs to be done in terms of that interest rate also mm. for developers to help them you know, have a soft landing. All right. Uh, most of our uh, Ewenla is um, a real estate consultant and, of course, um, a public affairs analyst. So he's actually abreast with uh, you know the economics and the politics of uh, you know housing and, of course, uh, 
what generally affects um, uh, the average Nigerian. But we will come back again after yes, today. Please. We need to talk about uh, the finances and, of course, uh, yes, what um, banks can do specifically uh, as regards uh, mortgages yes, because please. that's an angle we should be driving towards. Many yes, thanks please. for being a part Thank you for having me. of the show. All right, uh, that's as much as we can take on the show for today. Time is never really your friend when you uh, are having fun. My name is Justin Akadonye. Business Insights will return to your screen on Monday. Bye for now.